welcome back for another book talk video it's time for fiction friday i've been sitting around waiting to record for my cats to stop eating when one of them will finish eating the other one will go over and eat some more hopefully though they're done and there won't be any more background noise on the microphone one of the cats also came up here and just started swatting his tail around by the microphone on the table but all right here we go happy fiction friday to you today we are looking at the vanishing half by Britt bennett this is a work of historical fiction and let me tell you this book won best historical fiction in the goodreads 2020 category it received over a hundred thousand votes 102,626 votes which is a whole lot more than the second place winner the jane austen society which received 34,020 one votes folks that's a lot of votes that's a whole lot of votes so please understand this is an extremely well-liked book it's a really great book for me it was pretty much a three and a half star read and i know sometimes i'll say ah oh, it's three and a half stars and i love that cover it's so beautiful i'll round it up to four stars but this one i rounded down to three stars since goodreads makes you pick three or four stars it doesn't have the half stars because i almost didn't read this book to me, this is one of the ugliest covers I have seen on a book. I don't know what's going on. It's just not my artistic style, the way that they put the cover together. But upon second thought, I decided to read the book because I've been trying to read the winners in the different categories here that I am likely to read. And I do love historical fiction. I love Ken Follett's books, the Pillars of the Earth series and that sort of thing. I decided to give it a try. And I'm glad that I did. I do want to say three out of five five stars means that I like a book, it is good, and that I recommend it for other people to read. I tend to be nitpicky sometimes with the reasons behind it. I know the cover really shouldn't affect my review because authors usually don't have much say, if any say, on their cover if it's published by a major company. There are people within the company that decide that, not the author. It's really unfortunate because I bet Britt Bennett would have picked a beautiful cover for this novel if they would have let her. She's got an amazing artistic style and she's a great writer. This book is her second major book. It's a follow-up to the book Mothers, not the same storyline or sequel or anything like that. And I haven't read Mothers, but there were a lot of reviewers online who said that she has improved as an author, that it's an even better story, that this was not a disappointment as a second book. I do recommend that you read The Vanishing Half. Oh, hi, kitty. They're meowing at me. Sorry about the cats in the background. They just want attention at this point, I guess. All right, I'll try to make the review quick so I can go pet the cat. This is a story about multiple generations. It is a story about sisters, about twins. The vanishing half refers to how one of the twins decides to split off and go live a different life. But it is also a story about racism. I love the fact that Britt Bennett created a fictional town of Mallard, Louisiana. I'm originally from Louisiana, and I could very much picture this town and its existence. It seemed very real, the way that it was put together, knowing Louisiana and Southern culture the way that I do came across very well. In the town of Mallard, Louisiana, there are a lot of light-skinned black people, and it's happened from generation to generation, and there's just this racist stigma that people don't marry other black people. They try to look lighter-skinned, so a lot of them just keep marrying white people, trying to lighten the skin. There's a horrible racist stigma against not only black people in general, but the darker skin tone. But the people in Louisiana around this town of Mallard, they understand what's going on. And so even though the people in Mallard look more light-skinned and you would think could blend in easier with the white people, they're still discriminated against because people know the situation. So one of the sisters decides to leave and go pass as a white person and live the life of a white person, while the other sister decides to defy expectations and marry a dark-skinned black person and have a child. This creates all kinds of issues in both of their lives. So something that's really interesting about the story is you've got the multiple generations of women as they are trying to relate to one another and understand one another. You've got the different sisters, you've got their children, and you've got people keeping secrets from one another. In the course of the story, there are plenty of other issues that come up as well. It's a very interesting drama. It's a very literary story as well that explores the sense of identity in a society that is so racist. And it's definitely something to reflect on and to think about with your identity if you had a secret or you were a 
ashamed of something, would you try to be a different person? And if so, could you pull that off if it meant leaving your family behind? There's a lot here psychologically. There, I highly recommend the book. So maybe I should have rounded up the three and a half stars to four stars now that I'm talking about it going on and on with it. I guess my only real nitpicky part is because it's told from different generations across several different decades, to me there were some slight pacing issues maybe, uh, trying to put it all together. But I feel that way about a lot of books. That's not uncommon. It's just a preference of mine, the way that the, the plot and the story flows. Overall, though, great book. I hope you'll pick it up and enjoy it as some great historical fiction. That's it for today's book talk. Every day is a good day for a book talk. Peace.